This is a GCSE physics revision video about Newton's first law. In other words, how can we predict the motion of an object by looking at the forces that are acting on it? In this video, we're going to define what is meant by Newton's first law, including recalling what is meant by velocity and acceleration in physics. Then we're going to use Newton's first law to predict the motion of stationary objects experiencing balanced and unbalanced forces and moving objects experiencing balanced and unbalanced forces. This last bit is the tricky one because it's a little bit counterintuitive. Newton's first law tells us that when the resultant force or the overall force that is acting on an object is zero, acceleration is also zero. So this means that a stationary object will remain stationary and a moving object will continue to move at a constant velocity. Remember, velocity is a vector quantity that we can break down into speed and direction. So if something speeds up, it's accelerating. If it slows down, it's still accelerating, even though in everyday language we'd probably say decelerating. And if it changes direction, even if it's going at the same speed, then that's acceleration as well. So what we're saying is that if the forces acting on an object are balanced, it will carry on moving in exactly the same way that it was moving before the forces were applied. Let's see how this works in practice. We'll look at stationary objects first because they're much easier. Here I have a box sat on the table. It has a weight of 50 newtons and it experiences a normal reaction force where the table's basically pushing back that is also 50 newtons and that must be true because otherwise it would fall through the table. The overall or resultant force is zero newtons and so it is stationary. In order to change the box's motion or accelerate it, I would need to provide it with a new unbalanced force. So if I take a stationary object and I apply balanced forces, it will stay stationary. And if I take the same stationary object and I apply an unbalanced force, then it will move. Any stationary object that starts moving must have an unbalanced force acting on it. Here are four stationary objects that then suddenly experience the forces shown by the free body diagram, all simultaneously, all at the same time. Remember, this is just a model. So what will happen to each one of them? Pause the video and write down what you think. So my first object in the top left of the screen has got no resultant force acting on it. My two pairs of parallel forces are both balanced. So the up and down forces are balanced and the left to right forces are balanced. So therefore, if it was stationary before these forces were applied, then it's going to remain stationary now. My second object in the top right of the screen has got balanced upward and downward arrows, but the left to right forces are not balanced. There's a bigger force going towards the left, so there's going to be a resultant force towards the left, and therefore it will accelerate towards the left. So it's going to start moving that way. It's going to move faster to the left than it was moving before. In a similar way, my third object has got a larger force pulling towards the right, so it's going to accelerate towards the right. And then my final example has got a bigger downward force, so maybe I've suddenly hung a weight off this object, and also a force to the right, a resultant force to the right. So therefore, it's going to move down and to the right, and it's going to move on a sort of diagonal like that. Now, moving objects are not harder exactly, because they do have completely consistent rules, and as long as you follow the rules, you're not going to get confused. But they're counterintuitive, because the reality of what happens is not what we expect. The problem is that it's easy to think of a moving object as having a force acting on it that's kind of pushing it along, but that's not true. Remember, Newton's first law says that even when the resultant force is zero newtons, a moving object will continue to move at a constant velocity. So let's look at an example. Here's a boat with five main forces acting on it. There's its weight, the force that's caused by gravity acting on its mass, up thrust from the water sort of pushing back as it pushes down, thrust from its engines propelling it forward, and then the combination of water resistance and air resistance, which will combine together in one arrow and just call drag. The weight and the upthrust are balanced. They have to be because otherwise the boat wouldn't be floating. If the weight was bigger, it would sink. So I'm just going to stop including them to make this diagram a little bit easier to see. So the boat is going along at a constant speed. If it then uses its engines to generate more thrust, more forward momentum, what will happen? Well, fairly obviously, it will speed up. What about if it uses its brakes to generate more drag? What will happen to the motion then? It will slow down. So if increasing the thrust is going to make it speed up and increasing the drag is going to make it slow down, if the forces on the boat are balanced, it isn't speeding up, it isn't slowing down, it's going at a constant speed. This is a tough concept because it is slightly counterintuitive, but if an object is moving at a constant speed in a constant direction, then the forces acting on it must be balanced. 
If we look at this free body diagram, it's not possible to say whether the boat is stationary or moving, but it does tell us that it has a constant velocity. We just don't know whether that velocity is zero or a number. To check you understand, here are four more objects for us to analyse. This time, before we apply the forces shown by the free body diagram, they all have a constant velocity. They're all moving at five metres a second to the right. Then they experience all of the forces shown by the free body diagram simultaneously. Pause the video and write down what you think is going to happen to the motion of each object. The first object in the top left of the screen has got four balanced forces acting on it. There's no overall resultant force and therefore it's going to carry on moving exactly the same as it did before. It will carry on moving at five metres a second to the right. The second object in the top right of the screen has got a larger force to the right. It's already moving to the right and this is just going to kind of add into it and push this object to go faster. So it's going to speed up or accelerate to the right. The third object in the bottom left of the screen has got a resultant force to the left and that's going to oppose the motion of the object. So it's going to slow it down. And then finally, we've got two unbalanced forces that are perpendicular to each other. And this is going to cause the object to continue accelerating to the right, but also change its direction and move up slightly. I hope that was a useful introduction to this tricky concept. Thank you very much for watching. And if you found it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more physics videos coming soon.